Distillation is the keystone skill of systems thinking. So this might not be intuitive to you, but after reflecting on my career as a systems thinker and also uh, after interviewing more than a dozen systems thinker, I have come to believe and double down on that this is the base skill. So what I mean by base skill is think about music, think about um, sports. In music, uh, rhythm and pitch are probably the base skills. If you can't keep time, you probably can't do music as with my case, I have awful timing. Um, likewise, pitch is another aspect of a key skill of music. Uh, dexterity and coordination are going to be the key skills of uh, or key abilities, whether it's you know physical, cognitive, whatever, it's all coming from your brain, of physical sports and other activities. Likewise, uh, distillation is the bedrock skill of systems thinking. This is the co neurocognitive ability, the psychological capacity that one, it is a skill, um, but it's also something that everyone has um, innately, but you can develop it as with all skills. But this is the underpinning skill for everything else that happens inside of systems thinking. This, and I'll unpack this and explain what di uh, distillation is and how to practice it. But what I wanna drive home is that Distillation is to systems thinking what rhythm is to music. That is how central this ability is in terms of systems thinking. So, all right, at a very high level, what is distillation? Uh, the simplest way of thinking about it, it is getting to the core essence. It is identifying what is the quintessential aspect or uh, universal uh, content of a thing or a principle or whatever. It's about getting rid of all the noise, all the fluff, and boiling it down, getting down to the brass tacks. Um, it's about refining the signal to noise ratio, which I'll talk about more in a little bit. Um, but it's also, one, it is a natural cognitive ability. It is something that your brain is equipped to do. Um, and I'll, exp <laughs> I'll give you some examples in a moment, but it's, it's also a behavior. It is a practice that you can do, and I'll talk about how you can practice this skill as well. It's universal across all systems thinkers. Again, all humans have this, but systems thinkers take distillation to the level of a high art. Um, and then finally, the last cognitive ability um, that, that underpins uh, distillation is pattern recognition. Again, if you're watching this video, you have pattern, re pattern recognition. You have all the basic tools, all the basic ingredients. Now it's time to understand the importance, the central importance of distillation and understand how to practice it. So as an example, um, I'm going to pick on Elon Musk because I always do. He's the most famous and wealthiest system think systems thinker alive today. And so his uh, statement for SpaceX, which is get humanity to Mars, that is four words. That is an example of a perfectly distilled mission. It is a concrete objective. It is an actionable vision. It has a huge transformative scope. So yeah, but this is an example of when you distill something down, um, generally you can state it very succinctly and we'll talk about that uh, as the video goes in terms of aphorisms, missions, vision statements, acronyms, that sort of stuff. That is the end result of distillation. Uh, now there are other ways that distillation can express itself, but for the sake of, of simplicity, um, if you're not familiar with this concept, that's what we'll stick with. Uh, but yeah, get humanity to Mars, four words, perfectly clear vision. So one thing that I've noticed in talking to people when I pay attention to basically what I try and do is I try and discern um, when I'm interviewing people or whatever um, is do they miss the forest for the trees? And so missing the forest for the trees is, of course, a mantra itself. This is this is an idiom that is itself a distillation that has universal uh, applicability. But for people that miss the forest for the trees, they lack distillation or they didn't put in the effort of distillation. And so you can recognize if someone is missing the forest for the trees or if they're not, if they haven't practiced distillation or if you haven't practiced distillation and that they'll tend to default to a superficial understanding. So basically they'll kind of take things at face value. Um, another uh, sign of missing the forest for the trees or lacking distillation as a skill is that you'll get overwhelmed by complexity. You'll say, oh man, this is just, it's too jacked up. I, I can't understand this. And then you'll just kind of dismiss it. Um, but what, I, what I'm here to tell you is that distillation is actually how you reduce complexity. You sift through all of the noise and you get to the core essence that is actually usually very simple. Um, and so aphorisms and slogans so the, the crafting of aphorisms and slogans is actually a, a process of distillation. This is something that happens in politics all the time. So for instance, uh, MAGA, make America great again. 
This is a perfect example of how uh, the Republicans in America like weaponized distillation. They distill it to a concept. It's a core principle. It's an idea. It is a battle cry and it is a, it is memorable. Um, I have no idea why the Democrats don't do this, but they should. Um, but as a progressive, I will absolutely use distillation slogans and, a- and acronyms. Anyways, that's a, that's a, that's a topic for my other channels. Okay. So a rule of thumb again, uh, what you're looking for is general principles that are universally applicable. So literally the term rule of thumb, well, there's different things about where it comes from, but like you can imagine like a painter holding out your thumb for scale, right? Banana for scale, thumb for scale, whatever. But a rule of thumb, you understand what a rule of thumb is. It is something that is uh, relatively simple, that is going to be useful across a broad array of, of things. So this is based on experience, but it's also about um, accumulating tools in your cognitive toolbox. The more rules of thumb that you have, the better of a systems thinker you are. And in fact, all the systems thinkers that I've interviewed, ha- they collect a lot of these rules of thumb. Now there is some variance across domains, Uh, So, for instance, the rules of thumb that a physicist needs are going to be very different from the rules of thumb that, say, a farmer needs. But the ability to accumulate and distill and refine rules of thumb or general principles is part of the human condition. And so when I say general principle, just think rule of thumb. Well, like like I said at the beginning of the video, we all use this. We all have distillation. Um, And when you find a good rule of thumb, it will change your life. It will make you better at your career. It will make you better at relationships. And so on and so forth. So what I'm the point here is that I want to drive home is that you already have aphorisms and mantras and idioms and rules of thumb and general general principles. Um, but this is the way that you arrive at these is by distillation. Now distillation you can do it yourself, but it also is a group activity um, in political discourse in the news cycle. Um, within fields, within domains, within companies, you will naturally have this distillation um, emerge from ongoing conversation, which I'll talk about in just a minute as well. Distillation creates cognitive shorthand. So what I want to talk about here is why distillation is good um, and why it's helpful from a neuroscience perspective, from a neurocognitive perspective. One, simple rules of thumb are easy to remember. They're easy to repeat. Um, and I'll give you a few examples at the end of the video. Um, so memory, it, the best tool doesn't matter if you, if you forget it or you don't use it. They're simple and easy to remember. Um, but not only are they simple and easy to remember, they have universal applicability. They're general principles that, um, allow you to solve many kinds of problems, to make many kinds of decisions. And as I mentioned, systems thinkers, almost religiously collect these things. It's like stamp collecting for systems thinkers is how many aphorisms and mantras and idioms and rules of thumb and general principles can you collect and how can you attach mnemonic devices to them? Now, when you have a mnemonic device attached to a a cognitive ability, um, it's, it's, it almost seems like it's cheaper, but it's not cheaper. That doesn't make it less valuable. That makes it more accessible. Remember accessibility, simplicity, memorability. These are all things that make, um, distillation more accessible and more powerful. It's all about utility. It doesn't mean you, you don't have to have really abstract, um, scientific, you know, jargon sounding, um, rules of thumb. Um, again, use rule of thumb. Uh, that means that it is more accessible and it is more useful. And again, systems thinkers, we love simplicity. It's about that signal to noise ratio. Speaking of signal to noise ratio, part of what's going on in your brain is you're sifting through all the noise. And so how, like, what does this mean? You basically take a lot of data, whether it is from books or blogs or videos or personal experience um, or through conversation. So you take a whole bunch of noise and in all that noise, there are going to be good signals. And so distillation is about purifying that signal. What is the most salient, poignant and valuable insight that you can glean from all the noise and how do you purify that signal so that you can dial in the radio. Um, so, you know, think about, well, depending on how old you are, you might not remember dialing in an analog radio, but I've done it. Um, and so you, you kind of find the right frequency to get the information that you want. Um, society does this naturally. So like I said, uh, political discourse within certain domains, within, you know, within academic departments, within companies, distillation happens naturally through conversation, but you can also do it yourself through rigorous and systematic uh, approach. 
Um, now, also, subject matter expertise or domain expertise is often necessary. As I mentioned, a physicist is going to have different rules of thumb than a farmer. Um, and so there are going to be some rules of thumb or some distillations that are universal. Again, I'll, I'll give you a couple examples at the end of the video. Um, but there's also going to be rules of thumb that are very specific to particular domains or areas of expertise or professions. So I mentioned that uh, distillation is all about pattern recognition. Um, so basically, as I mentioned, your, your brain naturally has the ability to do pattern recognition. You can practice it. Um, so for instance, you visually recognize the zebra print, but you also visually recognize the face hidden in the zebra print. Um, so that is your, if you can understand this picture, your brain has pattern recognition. Congratulations. Um, you're banking on an evolved natural trait. It's a natural instinct, but you can also practice it. It is, it is a neurocognitive ability that you can practice and refine over time. And pattern recognition, once you, once you take in a lot of data, a lot of information, whether it's from conversation or videos or books or however you prefer to get information, you keep taking it in until you recognize the universal patterns. And that universal pattern, that really simple pattern that emerges from the noise, that's the signal that allows you to purify that pattern and distill it into some kind of principle or rule of thumb or truism or whatever, something that is universally true, or even if it's not always true, as long as it's useful. Right. So here's here's one thing that I'll say. Some people get hung up on the perfect definition. You don't need perfect definitions. Perfect definitions don't exist. You don't need something that is a true 100 percent of the time. You just need something that is useful most of the time. So um, mnemonic acronyms. So acronyms are great. I love acronyms. Most systems thinkers use um, and love acronyms. An acronym is another kind of mnemonic device. Um, just like how a rule of thumb is a mnemonic device. If it's, um, if it's shared lingo or shared jargon. Oh, and by the way, if you're wondering why I have Keanu Reeves, this is Johnny mnemonic. Um, so anyways, um, <laughs> it was a movie from like the eighties or nineties. He, he, he had a uh, several hundred gigabytes of data stored in his head. Um, so it's, it's thematically on point. Um, so acronyms are good though. So, um, uh, one example is SWOT analysis at SWOT. It can be a shared framework. Um, acronyms make it easier to communicate something. It makes it easier to study it and teach it. Um, but it is also very similar to an aphorism. All I have to do is say SWOT analysis and you know, oh, strengths, weaknesses, um, opportunities and threats. You don't even have to say all four words. It's just SWOT. That is literally a single syllable. So that goes back to that cognitive shorthand ability that distillation has. So SWOT analysis is a whole set of skills and practices and behaviors and strategies that has been distilled into a single syllable. I guess you could say SWOT analysis. So that's several syllables. But anyways, you get the idea. It makes it more accessible. Remember, we don't care about perfection. We don't care about absolute truth. We care about utility. Is it useful? Is it helpful? Does it help you get the results that you need? Yes. Great. Is it easy to remember? Excellent. The lower the threshold of, of usability, the better. Even if it's only 50% effective, if it takes 1% of the time and energy, great. Um, Cause again, uh, accumulating these distilled ideas, these aphorisms and mantras and, and acronyms, the more of those you have in your cognitive toolbox, the better you are. Because if you have one tool that's super easy to use, but it's only 50% effective, you're going to have a dozen other tools just like it that are going to get you across the finish line. So another principle that emerges that has been distilled from all of my talking with um, systems thinkers is that confusion is the enemy. Lack of clarity, that noise is the enemy. And so the primary thing that system singers look for and reach for is that distillation, is the signal to noise ratio, is reducing confusion. If confusion is the enemy, then clarity is the hero. So what we're always trying to do is come up with more and more clarity. If you don't understand something yet, if you're not perfectly clear, you're not done distilling something. And I'll talk a little bit more about ways that you can continue this distillation process in just a moment. Uh, so Socratic dialogue is an example of how to uh, go about deliberately distilling things. Like I said, distillation naturally happens um, out in society, you know, watching YouTube videos, um, participating in social discourse. Uh, they naturally emerge in families. They naturally emerge in businesses, naturally emerges in politics. However, you can uh, very deliberately uh, distill ideas. So here's an, here's an example. Here's a good story. 
Um, at my last corporate job, when I first started there, it was a hot mess. There was a lot of uh, politicking and stuff. And one of the managers kept trying to dump work on me. And he kept making excuses and basically lying. Like he was, he said things that he knew were untrue. So that, that is a lie. Um, but he really relied on plausible deniability. And so he was irritating me. And then he was also irritating um, one of my colleagues who had been at the company for like 30 years. And so I was irritated. My colleague was like flat out angry. And so we got on a call. We're like, we need to talk about this, this dude. This dude is really getting under our skin. And so we kept going back and forth saying like, what's going on here? Why is it that like, what is, what is the core thing that's happening? You know, he did this, he did that. He said this, he did this, he's undermining us. And I said, look, the bottom line is this guy is manipulative. And, and my colleague said, yes, you're right. That dude is manipulative. And so like, again, four words, that dude is manipulative. We distilled what was actually going on in that situation into something that we agreed on through Socratic dialogue. This is a true unassailable fact. So we distilled it down and, and that became a, a thing that we agreed on about this other guy who, by the way, left the company because he was denied a promotion, rightfully so, um, because why he was manipulative and useless. Um, but by, by talking through it, by, by, triangulating all of our experiences. It's like, I've had this experience. You've had this experience. This is the result. And, you know, whatever his motivations were, the consistent behavior was manipulation. And so that is a, that is one of the best examples of uh, that I have of using Socratic dialogue to distill a set of experiences down to a core assertion. That person is manipulative. Um, there's all kinds of ways that you can distill things down. You can distill people, you can distill events, you can distill concepts, uh, other kinds of stuff. D that's why I mean distillation is super, super universal as the bedrock skill under systems thinking. Okay, so as promised, as we're winding down the video, um, I'm going to give you a couple of examples. So one is the Ohio principle, which I didn't know the name of this until recently. I asked on LinkedIn of my fellow systems thinkers, what are your favorite acronyms or, you know, principles or whatever? And someone said, Ohio, only handle it once. And I immediately recognized it because in my career, I had already distilled the principle of solve a problem once. And so the Ohio principle, there's there's a, a bunch of examples as to you know how it can manifest, and I'll talk about it in just a second. But I want to address the image. Um, so the I, the reason that I have a hillbilly with a shotgun is because solve problems like a hillbilly with a shotgun. Um, if there's a rabid dog, shoot it with a shotgun. If there's a wolf, you know, chasing your sheep, shoot it with a shotgun. Uh, that, is, that is the mentality of Ohio. O only handle it once. So let me talk about how universally applicable this distilled principle is, this rule of thumb. Um, efficient problem solving. Um, uh, like I said, solve a problem once, make sure that you definitively address it so that it never comes back. Um, material handling. If you've ever done construction, you know that moving heavy stuff around is exhausting. And so one of the things that all construction workers and craftsmen realize is the less you have to pick up heavy things, the better off you are. So touch it once, you know, pick up a heavy material, put it where it's going to be. And, you know, rather than constantly moving it around, data processing is no different. Handling and curating huge data sets, you don't want to be constantly monkeying around with it. You get the data how it needs to be, and then you copy it indefinitely. <laughs> Task completion, if you're on errands, um, rather than stopping an errand halfway through, drive that errand through to completion and then cross it off your checklist. Find permanent solutions. So this is the Ohio principle. And you can see this Ohio principle is universally applicable. It applies to your daily life. It applies to family life. It applies to business. It applies to politics. Solve problems permanently and let it go. This reduces cognitive load over time. This reduces technical debt. All, I mean, this is one of the most universal principles in business and life and economics and whatever else. Another one, and this is my favorite, this is one of my favorite ones, it's from the South, is the juice worth the squeeze? So again, this is a simple question. It is a cognitive shorthand that is universally applicable. Is it, so here's a few examples as to where this applies. Return on investment. You, are you going to get the return um, that you need? So is it worth, is it, is it worth putting in the effort? Time and energy and other resources. Like, what is it going to cost and what are you going to get? What is the expected value that you're going to get out of an, of an activity? Is the risk worth the reward? That's another way. Is the juice worth the squeeze? Like, are you going to get the, the lemon juice in your eyes? And then finally, 
um, alternative opportunities. So every every action, every decision you have has an opportunity cost. You can only use that money for one thing. You can only use that time for one thing. You can only use those other resources for one thing. So if you have lemons, should you make lemonade or lemon meringue pie or something else entirely? Maybe you know slice it up and put it in a martini. You've got one lemon. How are you going to use it? Um, so this is why, again, the saying is the juice worth the squeeze perfect distillation of that principle of that cognitive tool that can be in your in your toolbox that allows you to optimally use your time energy and other resources so thanks for watching i hope you got a lot out of this like subscribe etc etc i've also got a patreon and other channels links are all in the description now i want to tell you i've got in a couple months coming up i'm going to be hosting a uh, a five-week webinar series it's going to be a master class on systems thinking this is going to be a very exclusive event um, so follow me on linkedin um, sign up on my patreon uh, or Substack. Again, all links are in the comments, but stay on the lookout because this is going to be a super valuable course as I continue refining and distilling systems thinking into these bite-sized pieces. It's going to be a five-week course, so it's going to be five sessions that are going to be between two and three hours each. So by the time you're done with this five five-week session, um, which is going to be 10 to 15 hours total of class time with me, you will be an expert systems thinker as well. All right. Thanks for watching to the very end. Cheers.